Hello again, welcome back to Legally Cited. This is BGFH and I'm back for another video. And today, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my thoughts on Apple's little iPhone event or iPhone iWatch or Apple Watch event that they had uh, yesterday as I'm recording this. I'm recording this on September 10th. Their little keynote event was on the 9th, and so I've had enough time to kind of think about things and, you know, read up on anything that I might have missed and just kind of digest things a little bit. So, you know, like the E3 videos and, uh, you know, last year's Apple event and whatnot, I figured I'd just do, an, do a little bit of a video on, give you guys some information on that, kind of, you know, my thoughts both from, you know, just a iPhone user and stuff like that and myself and, you know, potential for, you know, blind, you know, low vision and accessibility stuff. So while I'm talking about that, I was trying to think of what to have on in the background to make things a little bit more interesting. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, looking through my game list, uh, what we're looking at here is a little mini game that came in. Uh, if you haven't watched my jazz punk video, uh, check that out. It's a really bizarre but uh, but really kind of fun game, um, jazz punk. There's a mini game that you find in a couple of different places throughout that game called Wedding Quake. And as I play it here, I showed it off in the jazz punk video. But uh, um, that's it. Just sounded like yeah, that would be fun to play in the background because it's pretty mindless. So I don't have to concentrate on it too hard, and I can just you know babble on while we play some good old Wedding Quake. So you'll see this here soon enough. Um, so yeah, I'll have this on in the background uh, for something interesting to watch or look at. So here we go. So yeah, Apple, you know, Fine. it's been talked about for a long time. And like I said, I was really glad that the event actually finally happened because just this time of year, even around WWDC in May or June, and then around the time of any new Apple product, be it an iPhone, an iPad, whatever, just the few weeks up in that are just constant craziness of people just, you know, every type of rumor, like, under the sun, and like, oh, they're going to release this. No, they're going to release it that way. And, oh, this is going to do this crazy thing that we've never heard. And just all kinds of nonsense. And it's just, you know, a couple rumors here and there are okay, but it's just any other product you know there's rumors about google there's rumors about game consoles and things like that but just the sheer madness that is the apple rumor kind of gets old especially leading up to a product release time but thankfully we have pretty much all the answers now and i was actually pretty pleased with the uh new uh, iPhone event and whatnot. So I thought it went pretty well. So they started by unveiling the new iPhones. We're going to have the iPhone... Oh, that's going to hurt. Yeah. Um, they're going to have the iPhone 6 and they're going to have the iPhone 6 Plus. And it was... That was one rumor that people have had right for quite a while. They are releasing a four points. The iPhone 6 is going to be a 4.7 inch screen. The iPhone 6 Plus is going to be the 5.5 inch model. Um, there's not a whole lot of differences between them other than screen size. They're both going to have their, their upgraded uh, processor, their uh, A8 processor. They are both going to have their M8 processor, which is, that's their separate processor they use for things like, um, like all the mo the motion tracking or like the fitness stuff. So if you're using like a pedometer or their Apple's new health apps, you know, you're going to be able to track not only your running, your walking. Uh, they actually added a barometer to both of the devices. So now I can um, track if I'm how many stairs I've climbed during the day, which, okay, that that's pretty cool because, you know, going up a bunch of stairs, and that's definitely great exercise, so that's kind of helpful to know. Um, yeah, so you've got your 
processor, a little more video stuff, you know, with, with the processor, your motion thing, bigger screens, 4.7 and 5.5. Um, cameras are going to be better, obviously. Uh, both are their 8 megapixel cameras, and uh, beyond that, like, I don't really understand, like, some of the other crazy camera specs kind of things, but they're, they're obviously they're both going to have improved cameras. The camera themselves, there's one minor difference between the 6 and the 6 Plus. Uh, the 6 Plus, the 5.5 inch model, which is uh, the one that I am really interested in, one of their features is they're adding some extra image stabilization features to it, which if I understood them correctly, I'm, I'm thinking or I'm understanding that this image stabilization stuff is b supposed to be for both video and pictures, I'm hoping, still shots. Uh, I don't really take too many pictures. I take the occasional still shot picture, but especially after starting this channel, uh, I don't, you know, I do take a fair number of videos using my iPhone now, so uh, I'm really quite interested to see how the image stabilization, that could potentially help out a lot. Um, also, you know, think about apps like all those magnifier CCTV apps that I've covered on the channel so far. All of those could benefit greatly from image stabilization. Uh, in addition to that, they were talking about how the cameras, they have a lot better uh, refresh, a lot, a lot faster focus, supposed, supposedly like double the, um, or twice as fast focusing speed. So that, I think, is even going to be, you know, between the image stabilization and the focus speed, that is really, really going to help a lot of these apps, especially the magnification and even some of the OCR apps um, that are out there. Because, you know, even when I use Over 40 or iCam or I can't remember if I've covered the magnificent magnifier on the channel yet if i haven't i will remedy that i'll, I'll double check my videos but uh if there's one problem that i have with using my phone as a cctv it's that some of the apps sometimes they just don't focus very well or they they're like they're not focusing fast enough so you kind of have to move it around and then you wait and then you, and then you paw you know then you it focuses and eventually you know it sharpens up or if you move it too fast then it takes a while for it to refocus whereas if you're using something like a portable cctv you know that you have that an assistive technology company would make something like the compact or the ruby or anything like that um they don't typically have that problem because they're just dedicated to that task but given that iOS is going to add more camera control, direct camera control to developers, and this uh, you know image stabilization and quicker uh, focus, I, I'm really really hopeful for being able to use my phone even better as a magnifier. So, you know, some of these uh, magnifier companies might want to get a little more worried uh, in the next year or two. So, let's see, we've talked about the processor, the, mo the uh, M8 chip, the cameras, the screen size. Those are really the main, uh, the main selling points, I think, on the new iPhone. They are, oh, yeah, okay, they are both going to also include better Wi-Fi. Um, they're doing like Wi-Fi AC, which is better than N. I don't know if I've ever used AC, like, connected to a router, but uh, it's supposed to be really, really fast. And I have an iPhone 5 right now and an iPad Air. And I notice right now, like, at home, I, I'm in a one-bedroom apartment, and... If I use my phone in the living room, it's typically okay. Although it sometimes it takes a little while for it to really, I'll, it'll say three or three Wi-Fi bars, but it will still tell me um, it'll say three or three Wi-Fi bars and network connection in progress. 
and it'll say that for a few minutes, you know, a couple minutes so sometimes. It can take a long time to actually really hone in on that network until it really behaves well. Because until that network connection progress goes away, my connectivity, like what I want to do, things really don't come up very well. And I don't have that problem. I have that problem very rarely, Welcome if at all, on the break. iPad Air. So, I mean, I've just noticed that the iPad Air so far, the, the Wi-Fi on it is just way better. And Champagne. I'm looking forward to having my phone have just that much improved Wi-Fi on its own. Pretty so, looking agreement. forward to that. A um, couple of interesting things regarding phone that they did talk about because remember you know yeah the iPhone still you know, even though we use it pretty much as a computer these days it is a phone so uh, a couple things that they mentioned were were that um, starting pretty soon they're gonna have uh, voice over LTE so if your network supports it or your area supports it um, if you know wherever you live if if your area supports voice over LTE coverage that's supposed to, I've never actually heard it yet. Uh, I know some Android devices have this feature right now, and I've heard that the voice quality is just vastly better than traditional coverage or traditional voice. So, you know, that could be really good. Um, really looking forward to seeing how that works. But what really caught my attention is they talked about a feature where. Unfortunately, in the U.S., it seems like Sprint, or not Sprint, T-Mobile are the only people that are going to be doing it right away. But it's going to hopefully come to other carriers soon, and I say the sooner the better. They're talking about having, um, it's supporting Wi-Fi calling. So let's say, you know, like my apartment is a perfect example of this, because anyone who comes to my apartment will immediately tell you, the cell phone coverage in my apartment building sucks and sucks hard. Um, when I moved in, like, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, this place is great, you know, not a problem. And I didn't, you know, I didn't even think to really check my coverage because, like, I just, everything else was good. And I just, I'm in a big city. I should be fine. Um, get moved in. And then, like, everybody leaves. And, like, I was going to call someone. And I just, I realized, like, oh, my God, the network, the, uh, cell phone coverage in this place is terrible and the only way right now that i can even have and i have Shut verizon me. so you know they're no verizon is known for good coverage but any carrier i've had people come i've had friends come in with at&t with sprint with whatever and they all suck um there must there must be like a bunch of steel in the building or really I don't know what it is, but there's got to be something in this building that is just crazy and acting like this, like, Faraday, almost like a Faraday cage, just, it's, but it's really bad. Um, the only way that I'm able to get decent phone coverage is I had to go through Verizon and I had to buy this couple hundred dollar network extender. And what it does is it's a little, little box, um that you set up near a window it's got a little antenna on it you set it up by your window and you connect it to your wire or you to your router and so what it does is it uses whatever through the antenna and then it piggybacks off of your uh actual wi-fi so i have a cable uh i have cable internet so it piggybacks off of that and through whatever wizardry it does um, I connect, before I make a call, I, I hear this little noise, and that tells me that I'm on this network extender coverage, and I can get phone, I can get phone access. If, I, if that goes out for whatever reason, or it's acting screwy, I'm lucky to get one bar. So, one of the things that the, these new iPhones are going to have, uh, once network starts supporting it, is if I come home and I have... Or if I go to a business or a friend's house, family's house, whatever, somewhere that has poor internet coverage or a for, poor phone coverage, I should say, um, I can connect to their Wi-Fi, and as long as I'm on their Wi-Fi, it will just it will do actual, real like just real network phone calls 
over Wi-Fi. And if I'm on the phone and then I leave, it's supposedly it's just supposed to trans transfer or transition from my Wi-Fi and then, I'm, oh, okay, I'm, out, I'm outside, okay, I have enough signal. It will just seamlessly transfer over to the carrier's network uh, so I can continue my phone call. Now, how well that's actually going to work in practice versus theory, I don't know, but it definitely has potential, and I would really love to see that happen not just for T-Mobile customers. I would love to see this come to other carriers as soon as possible. So if my network extender bites the dust, I would love to just be like, okay, you know what? I just connect to my Wi-Fi and boom, I have, inter or I have internet, uh, I have uh, voice calls, I'm good. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on that. Um, I think that's really, I think that really covers most everything about the phone. You know, it's gonna, it's still, both of them are still gonna have the Touch ID stuff that they introduced in the right. iPhone 5S last year. Shampoo. So that's gonna be the same pretty much. Um, although they're, you know, they've, they're not restricting it to just Apple things. Now they have a third party API so that other app developers can use the, uh, the um, sensor for security for their own apps, not just Apple stuff. So that'll be nice. Um, they didn't really talk a whole lot about iOS 8. I mean, they're, you know, they talked a little about the, the camera features and they talked about the new fitness apps that, that are going to be in there. And But I mean, really, iOS 8, that was their WWDC. That's where they spent a lot of time talking about the changes that were going to be in w, or in uh, iOS 8. Um, so, availability. Uh, we will be able to pre-order both the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus on Friday, uh, September 12th. So, midnight... Uh, Midnight tomorrow, midnight Thursday, if you really want to go pre-order it, um, you should be able to. And that's midnight uh, Pacific time. I'm, uh, I'm unfortunately later, so if I choose to do that right away, I'm going to have to like go to bed early and then like wake up at probably 2, 3 in the morning and try to do it then, which sucks. But, you know, like I said, the rampant demand for all this Apple stuff. It's like if I want to get a phone... And I want to get it before like the end of like October or November, and I don't want to have to fight with it constantly. Eh, probably better pre-order it right away because that's just the way it is. So both devices are going to be able to be pre-ordered on the 12th, and they're going to be actually available on September 19th. Originally, there was a lot of speculation that due to like, manufacturing problems that the 5.5 inch uh, iPhone 6 Plus was going to be delayed. But apparently, like I said, that's why I don't buy into all these rumors. Like, yeah, it could be possible, but you know, no, they didn't say that. Both models are going to be launched on the 19th. So maybe they'll, maybe they'll be less, uh, they didn't say anything, but you know, but maybe they'll, the 5.5 model will have less right away, but you know, they didn't make any indication to that, so all we know is both of them will be out. And iOS 8 itself, for current iOS users, iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch users, is going to be available September, Wednesday, September 17th. So, two days before the official phones launch we can get our hands on iOS 8. And actually, if you really want to do it, like you want to do the update through iTunes, you can get the iOS 8 Master right now. I believe, what was it, Lifehacker, I think, had a uh, post about where to grab that. I'm sure you can probably find information on that anywhere right now. I'm probably not going to do that right now just because pff, I don't really want to deal with iTunes and... I can wait the extra week. I'm totally fine with that. A friend of mine did. Uh, he called me today, and uh, he did go get the iOS 8 Master, and he said it's pretty awesome so far. He's liking it overall, and potentially 
they may have fixed a few accessibility issues. Remember, we're going to get uh, we're going to get Alex as a voice for iOS 8. So the voice that you that you hear on the map, you know, a lot more human sounding. And it's supposed to be uh, it's going to be in iOS 8, and it's actually very responsive from what I've heard, even despite being you know more of a natural sounding voice. The responsiveness is uh, very good. Uh, unfortunately, it takes up a lot of space. I think he said, what was it, like 890 meg for the one voice compared to like one, was it like 120 for all the other smaller voices? So just something to keep in mind uh, should you be wanting to Champagne. go for that uh, higher quality Alex voice. But, uh, and they may have also fixed some of the Braille input issues from what it sounds like. Uh, he played with a Braille display. And it sounded like he was getting some better luck with that. So that's all I'm going to say about that kind of stuff right now. I'm definitely going to cover iOS 8 and the iPhone 6 Plus when I get them. Uh, so I'm going to cover both of that on the channel. Uh, for Welcome sure. And uh, yeah, that's really the what they covered on the iPhone front. Uh, except for after the phones... Fight. Before they went into their next major topic, they did talk about a new, pretty interesting payment thing that they're introducing starting October 1st. And this is a service called uh, Apple Pay. And Apple Pay is basically, they were talking about wanting to change how people did, you know, financial transactions. You know, they, they were kind of complaining and kind of making fun of the traditional wallet and credit card model. I mean, it's, you know, people get their wallet stolen or they lose their wallet or they lose their credit card. Um, you know, if people have the, you know, on a credit card, you have the number visible on the front of the card. You have the three digit security pin uh, printed on, on the back. So if somebody steals or even borrows your credit card, you know, you're at you're at a restaurant and your waiter or waitress says, "Yeah, let me take the card for you. I'll run it. I'll run the. You can you know you can uh, sit at your table here and chat or whatever. I'll take care of your bill." Um, you know, you really don't want to do that. <clears throat> um, you know, I've heard that countless times. Um, you know, you want to be in sight of somebody handling your credit card because. You know, if you're not there, they can write down your credit card number, write down your PIN, and they can have a good old time. So, um, what they're doing with this Apple Pay is, um, you, if you have a some like a credit card information that you're using with your iTunes account already, go ahead and keep using it. Um, it will work with Apple Pay. It'll just work that way. If you want to add additional cards, and I'm not exactly sure how this works, but essentially they were saying that you can take a picture of your uh, of your card, and either they will, I'm not sure if, if they will validate it with your bank, or if you have to go to your bank or something for them to validate it, that it, this card is you, or this card is for you. But once you do have this card validated with with your, um, you know, th this new card is associated with your Apple ID and Apple Pay, then you can choose to use that as, as a checkout too. And the way this works is, so stores are going to have these, um, what the heck do you call them? Um, NFC. I just went stupid for a minute. This NFC chip is in there. Um, that's the one feature I did forget to mention that is in both of these new iPhones. Um, so it's got this NFC chip and these uh, payment devices that the stores are going to have, they will have that. And so the way this is supposed to work, and they showed a little video clip of it during the keynote, they uh, basically you use your fingerprint sensor uh, on the lock screen. You don't even have to unlock your phone apparently and because you have this payment information tied to your Apple ID and Apple Pay you validate that it's you with your fingerprint Jesus and um, you hold it up to or you hold it near this 
uh, NFC receiver thing. And, you know, once the cashier has totaled up whatever it is you're paying for, you just hold it up there, boop, makes a little beep noise, and you've paid. You don't have to sign. You don't have to uh, enter a pin. None of that anything. You're basically just uh, confirming that with your fingerprint. So it's supposed to be pretty slick. And they they announced a lot of different partners. Um, I couldn't read them all that they had on the uh, little slides that they had. But, you know, they were talking about, like, um, grocery stores and, uh, like, Disney and Apple stores, obviously. Um, I forget all of them. There, there's just supposedly quite a few that are going to be that they're partnering with right away and then more are going to be added. They're working with uh, Visa, MasterCard, and I think American Express right now. I did read a tweet earlier today that they were saying that Discover is also on board and they're going to be hopefully getting integrated, in, integrated into that system pretty soon. So if you want to use Discover, that should be an, uh, an option in the near future. Um, the other thing that makes this Apple Pay thing kind of kind of helpful is that it's kind of, I would almost kind of compare it to like using a PayPal or something because when you do this transaction with a vendor, you're not actually, the, the interesting thing is the way this works is it doesn't, they never see your credit card number. Um, even though you have your credit card number on file with Apple, um, they, the, the, vendor that you're buying something from, they don't ever see that. Instead, this um, Apple Pay generates this one-time transaction code, and that's the number that gets referenced, like if you ever need to refer to that purchase again or whatever it is. So they don't actually get your credit card information either. So should I buy something from, oh, I don't know, let's say Target, uh, you know, the, the whole thing with them in the news not too long ago where their systems got all hacked um, that's kind of a cool way to do it because then if they don't you know they have these one-off transaction numbers in there so even if somebody does compromise that vendor's system they don't have a whole bunch of people's credit card numbers because it's a one-time transaction thing and it's not going to work for any future purchases so that's pretty good um I don't know, Champagne. like I said, they're going to start this in October. Ow. I don't know how quickly, re or realistically, I don't know how quickly this stuff is going to roll out. Um, is it going to be adopted quickly? I don't know. Obviously, it's going to probably come to larger cities first. Uh, I do live in a fairly larger city, so I could potentially, I would say within the next year, maybe I will see some of that come to my area. And if I do, I will kind of, you know, I can definitely talk about it maybe in a future video or something like that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, potentially, um, I, this, this Apple Pay thing could be kind of cool. Um, if done correctly, you know, everyone was, you know, right before this event happened, they had this whole security breach thing where people got like a bunch of information and pictures of like these celebrities and stuff, which they didn't address during this keynote thing. But, you know, I, I'm sure this whole security thing comes up regarding this too. It's like, oh yeah, well I'll, now I want to give Apple my credit card information. I don't fully understand how this Apple Pay thing works, but supposedly, like, they don't store your credit card information on their server, or they don't, I don't know what their deal is, like, they don't have, they can't access your credit card information associated with Apple Pay, <clears throat> it's in some sort of weird, like, limbo thing that, like, only your device can access, or something or other, I'm not going to pretend to try to explain it because I don't really get it, but supposedly... They've thought of a thing, so basically, like, you, no one really can access it except for you and your device or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, should be uh, should be a pretty interesting development, and we'll see what happens with that over the next year or two. So, we're pretty much done with the iPhones uh, now. 
And thankfully, I'm glad it finally happened because I'm tired of hearing the rumors and everything. Yes, Apple has decided to, decided to enter the wearables arena and they're coming out with their own. They're not calling it an iWatch, they're calling it the Apple Watch. Uh, which kind of takes some getting used to. I'm probably going to make a mistake and call it iWatch from time to time because that's just what you would think it would be called. Everything else is i this, i that. But uh, yeah, they are making an iWatch. It's not going to be out till early 20, 2015, so or it's not going to be out till early next Shut year sometime. Up. But they did spend quite a bit of time on it. Um, I definitely have really mixed feelings on it. Um, I'm not really gung-ho about this whole watch thing, and I'll kind of explain why as we go here. But uh, so they ran this little video describing the watch to kind of get started. Um, they're basically this Apple Watch is going to be. They have three different models. Uh, I don't remember the exact names, but they have the basic, the base model. Then they have the sport model, which is a little bit more durable for people who work out and do all kinds of you know more crazy stuff. They have a little more durable model, and then they have basically the rich people model, um, which has uh, what did they say like 12 or 18 karat gold stuff in there. Some kind of like they made a harder gold combination gold like it's watcher. supposed to be harder than like regular gold watches or something I don't know but those things are going to be ridiculously expensive I'm sure um, so it's both like I said there the watches themselves are going to come in three different flavors the regular the sport and then the gold kind and then they're also having all kinds of different bands so you have like a fitness band a leather band a traditional type of watch band like a metal stretchy clasp band thingy um, different color bands in some cases. Um, so there's a lot of, they, they talked a lot about more, you know, not just being functional. Like a lot of people complain like, yeah, okay, some of these features might be cool, but a lot of like the Android wear and just a lot of the other smartwatch de type of devices that are out there so far, people just, they don't like them from a fashion standpoint. They don't want to wear them because they think they're big and ugly. Um, so Apple made a point to be like, hey, we're making these things functional and aesthetically pleasing to look at or, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess they, they look okay to me. I mean, I'm fine with them, I guess. But, uh, so those are the watches themselves. And then they did do like a live kind of conceptual demo of how these things are going to work. So, I don't know exactly what operating system, if it's running like a weird, like almost like a weird modded version of iOS, or if it's own, if it's its own little, if it's its own little I, uh, operating system that just so happens to integrate with iOS somehow, I have no idea. But, you, they did say that, yeah, I mean, it's meant to work with your iPhone, so you're going to need an iPhone to really use this thing. You know, it doesn't really do much on its own as its own standalone device so you're going to want to have an iPhone and these Apple watches uh, <clears throat> so I don't know here's where I really have a problem with the watches okay so like I said I, I already said that the gold ones are probably going to be really expensive they didn't exactly announce prices but what they did say regarding price and availability like I said they're going to come out sometime probably early next year and they said all they said for price is starting at 349 so starting at 350 bucks and i don't know about you guys i mean i know you can buy regular watches for hundreds and thousands of dollars but i just i can't imagine myself paying like for for a smartwatch of any kind like I would just to try it once or like kind of a novelty thing just to see if I would actually like the concept. I would maybe try a $50 watch, or maybe at most, an absolute most, 100 bucks, just for once to try it. Um, but 350 bucks, I think not. Um, that just seems too expensive for me. Um, and especially with the way these things work. So. It has its own little home screen. So basically, there's there's two ways that they were talking about how you control these things. 
on the right side of the watch, there's this little knob thing they call the crown. Um, like you would have, you know, the, the, the crown on a regular watch. And the crown works as a home button. And you can also turn it so you can do like zoom in and out kind of thing with it. Because you're on such a small screen, you have to find a way to, you know, easily zoom in and out. I mean, it's going to be so small. Your pinch to zoom gesture probably isn't going to work that well because you don't have that much screen space to be able to really pinch and zoom. So uh, that's where they came up with the whole crown idea. It's like, well, you can kind of get around it a little bit easier or cycle through options, zoom in and out, that kind of thing, and not have to block part of the screen while you're doing that. Now there is, it does also have a touch screen, so when you do want to tap on things, kind of like you do with iOS, you can. Champagne. And when they were demoing this thing, I was looking at it going, man, that home screen, I mean, I, and I'm looking at this going, this is on a really tiny watch too. Um, the, the home screen just had these tons of these little circles, and... You could zoom out, and there were a whole load of them, but then as you spun the little crown wheel, it would, you would zoom in, and then it would focus onto a cluster of maybe, like, I don't know, five or six of them. But even those five and six, you, you think about that being on a tiny watch screen, A, being able to see the thing, and B, if you wanted to actually, if, you know, you wanted to touch it, to me, those icons seem like they would still be really small. And the resolution of your finger, you know, um, I have fairly big hands, and so I think that would be, even when you're zoomed in, trying to touch on some of those small icons or on some of those small areas accurately. I don't know if that's going to work very well. Um... I don't know if you can use, like, the crown or whatever to somehow click without using the touch. I don't really know, but I don't know. So when you go beyond the home screen, you know, obviously you can look at your... You can have different clock faces. You can do all that kind of stuff. But then you can have, you know, Apple apps and third-party apps. And you're going to be able to check your phone, text messages, your notifications, uh, Twitter, Facebook... You can look at, you can zoom in and like show like a single picture. It's basically, uh, you know, I've heard a couple people compare it to the iPad Nano, which is that tiny, tiny little thing. And where people actually made watch bands to turn it into a watch. That's basically what this thing is going to be, except for it has like other health sensors, which I'll we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, it's basically an iPad Nano but they've just made it officially now, and it's a watch with some extra stuff in it. I, I just can't imagine, you know, a, a being low vision, but even just with full vision, like, do I really want to read through my, if I have my, if I have to have my phone with me anyway to have, to make it interact with a lot of this stuff, am I really going to want to read Facebook and tweets and, look at pictures, am I really going to want to do that on a watch that is so tiny? I mean, yeah, it's on my wrist and everything. I don't have to take my phone out of my pocket. But other than really checking the time or maybe a quick glance at something, I don't... I guess I just don't see the appeal, especially as far as, like, pricing goes. Like, yeah, if I could do this for 50 bucks, okay, it would be an interesting novelty. But what I really want, Welcome what I really to want to pay break. that much to do basically the same things that Fight. I would do on my phone that I carry on me anyway, I, I mean, I'm sure people are going to buy it, but personally, you know, I mean, I could, when the, when the iPad came out, they're saying, well, why would you want that? You already got your phone. No, the iPad still makes sense because it's really you can you have a lot more screen space. You can play games, you can view web pages, you can do more productivity style apps. No, that makes sense to me. Like I can see a market for having a phone and a tablet. I have well, as you've seen on video, I have several of each. So 
that I get, but I just don't quite understand the whole Apple Pretty Watch or even just smartwatch in general. I just don't understand that yet. And, you know, maybe time will tell and maybe it'll be crazy and Port take launcher. off and maybe and I could be completely wrong. But right now, especially for the cost of it, I just don't know. So aside from like, you know, all the calendar and tweets and you can do Siri with it, of course, you know, to make it easier so you can dictate and not have to try to, you know, input using this thing as well. You know, it's got like little smart suggestions. So like, you know, if I'm messaging somebody, it tries to analyze and based on context or give suggestions so that, you know, instead of having to dictate or try to type something, you can just tap like, oh, you know, someone said, are you coming? You know, are you coming now or later or whatever? And so it's like, you, so you'd have choices on logical responses you could you could do and just tap them and then you're done that's okay but the other selling point to this apple watch is their whole fitness initiative which will obviously integrate with the ios 8 fitness and health apps um so on the bottom of the watch that you know the part that is touching your wrist um, there are sensors that track different vitals I, I can't remember all what it tracks but a lot of it is like your your heartbeat and uh, your, you know your pulse, your heartbeat, whatever, and uh, I think a couple of other vitals that I don't quite remember, but that kind of thing. So it'll measure some stuff there. Um, it'll work as a, a pedometer sort of thing, and that might actually be a little bit more accurate than the phone because you know you're when you're walking, you'll you'll just naturally have your arm moving <clears throat> the way you would when you walk. So that's the one feature of like a smartwatch or some kind of watch that I wouldn't mind having Champagne. is the whole pedometer thing. Uh, it also will have uh, haptic Not feedback so it can tell you, you know, without looking at it, you can tell different things. Like one of the things that they talked about, um, not just for health, but even for other uses, let's say you have a GPS app thing on your phone or on your watch you're walking somewhere and it's like, oh, okay. Uh, instead of looking down at the map screen and when it's time to turn left or right, you get the haptic feedback, which I think is pretty cool. And you'll get different feedback. So left might be, I don't know, you know, it'll be different vibrations. So maybe left will be one, maybe two vibrations will be right. Um, so without looking at the screen, you know, you can keep your eyes on the road or eyes on the, you know, as you're walking, whatever. Um, that can help with navigation. And that is, for a blind person, as a navigation aid, that could be kind of helpful, you know, so you don't necessarily always have to try to listen to your phone or listen to whatever. You can get some of that via haptic feedback, and that could be kind of helpful. Um, but back to the health stuff, um, you know, you can, you can track your heartbeat, do your pedometer thing, and it links, of course, with your phone and all those apps. When they were talking about messaging, too, it was really weird because with the whole heartbeat thing, um, you know, I could see if you were sending some stuff to your doctor or maybe you had a, you know, you were wondering about something and you sent the information to a friend that was a doctor or a nurse or something just to get their kind of opinion. But they were doing this messaging demo uh, on stage and where it's like, oh, I'm going to message this person. And they were talking about, oh, I'm going to go get lunch or we, we should go get lunch. And then, oh, what do you want to get? Okay, well, I want to get sushi. And uh, so the other person uh, sends back their heartbeat. And uh, I don't really understand, other than really gimmicky, I don't really get that either. I mean, yeah, if you're doing it for a doctor or something, okay. But why would that be a bragging feature that I'm going to send you my real heartbeat as an emoticon? Um, alrighty, I guess. Sure, Welcome maybe just because you can. Um, yeah, I think that's really about it, because we can. <laughs> you know, it's there, so I guess why not make it a weird emoticon st style thing? I don't know why, but sure. Um, so, I mean, really, that's what we know about the iWatch, you know? I mean, Apple's going to have a bunch of their apps... They have a developer API that some people already have. So early next year, what is going? Okay, 
um, when the thing comes out sometime next year, uh, people there there will be some apps for it. Uh, like I said, the cheapest model is going to be three hundred and fifty bucks. So yeah, I'm not going to get one, but I'm sure a lot of people will. Um, you know, they've kind of the main thing is they've kind of mainly fixed or they've addressed a lot of people's concerns regarding the whole fashion. Uh, fashionability or whatever I don't know I just made that word up but the whole fashion or style of these smartwatches they address that I think better than <clears throat> any of the competitors so far if you care about that kind of thing um, you know I used to wear a watch all the time and since I got my phone I just I really don't I kind of don't like having a watch on my wrist anymore, or I just don't feel I need it. I mean, occasionally it would be nice, but it's so easy to just, you know, if I've got my, especially I'm wearing my Bluetooth headset all the time with voiceover, I just, if I have my my phone in my shirt pocket or if I have my phone in my pants pocket, I just reach reach in there, hit the power button, touch the near the top of the screen, and voiceover tells me the time. So, you know, I don't know... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really need a watch. Um, and they didn't mention anything about accessibility. And even after the event, I haven't heard any tweets or any real confirmations either way, one way or another, as to whether this Apple Watch is going to have any, like, voiceover accessibility built in. Part of me says I don't know if a device like this will include accessibility, but... I would also say that if anyone is going to make a smart, a smart watch like this that will have accessibility, I will say that it's going to be Apple. Apple will do it first because, I mean, you really you think about it, they have all their iOS devices, iPhone, iPod, iPad, all those have them built in. Macs have them built in. Apple TVs, they have voiceover built in. So, you know, it might not be like a full voiceover thing, but at least it might be enough. Maybe it'll be a stripped down version of voiceover. Maybe it'll be, you know, something else. But since they have invested this much into accessibility, like I said, if anyone's going to probably include accessibility into a tiny little device like that, um maybe Apple will be the ones to do it. So that I'm sort of curious to see if and how they do it. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out eventually. And really to wrap up their show, then they were talking about this, uh, you know, they had this other, this other little stage show thing and they had U2 came on the stage and U2 did a couple of songs. I'm not a huge U2 fan. I'm, I... I think I maybe know one or two songs that I could probably name off the top of my head. Um, yeah, you know, just not generally a big U2 fan. I mean, I know a lot of people like them, but, you know, whatever. Uh, if you do have an iOS device and you have an iTunes account, uh, I forget what the name of their album is, but any I, any uh, iTunes user can go. It's already, if you, if you look in your purchased items uh, area, you automatically get U2's uh, new album. Uh, it, I looked just to see. Uh, I looked in my iTunes thing yesterday, and yes, I can confirm that we do. Uh, I do have it. So yeah, uh, and I think it's until like the middle of October. If you register an iTunes account and have an iOS or an I some kind of an iOS device, you will get uh, U2's uh, album for free. So you know, hey, nice, nice little gift there. That's you know. It's free. I can't complain. So, yeah, beyond that, uh, that was really the end of their presentation. So, my thoughts overall, uh, you know, like I said, a main thing is I'm just, I'm glad the event is over and I'm, I'm glad that I know when iOS 7 is going to, or I, iOS 8 is going to come out, uh, which is September 17th. I know that we know that we have two phones, the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus, the 4.7 and the 5.5 inch ones respectively. I, you know, we know that we can pre-order them on September 12th. We know they're coming out on the 19th. Um, you know, all this speculation nonsense and rumors and 
people arguing about what's going to happen. All of it can finally calm down until, you know, maybe tomorrow when they start talking about iOS 9 already. <laughs> um, just because that's the way the Pretty Apple community is. Agreement. But, um, you know, I'm just glad that the information is out there. And, you know, honestly, I, I have been looking forward to potentially getting a new phone for a while now, especially a bigger phone, seeing people's Android phones and stuff. Um, I, I knew that if they were coming out with a new phone, that a bigger phone, I was going to get it. And uh, they confirmed it. So, yes, I am indeed going to be especially with the extra camera features and the uh, the bigger screen, I'm definitely going for the 5.5 inch iPhone 6 plus and I'm probably going I'm probably going to pre-order it uh, on the 12th if I can because that way I can get it right away and start playing with it, start using it and uh, potentially do some iPhone 6 and uh, iOS 8 coverage on the channel pretty quickly after release. Assuming that my nice little reflector app will still work with, <laughs> with iOS 8. Maybe I'll have to get an update, but I'll check into that as we go as well. So, Welcome to um, Quick. yeah, I think uh, that uh, I'm, you know, I'm pleased with what they announced. Uh, I'm just happy to get a bigger phone with, uh, like I said, a bigger screen, faster processor. Um, I'm really interested in the better Wi-Fi. Potentially the um, payment thing, the Apple Pay could be cool. I'm potentially, once Carrier is adopted, I'm really interested in the Voice over LTE and very, very interested in the Wi-Fi phone calls, not necessarily needing to have these network extenders anymore if you live in a, a bunker like I do or if you live in just a poor cell phone coverage area um, that will be fantastic should they roll this kind of stuff out hopefully very soon the iWatch uh, you know with what we've seen of it I mean yeah it looks okay as far as what it is I mean I think it looks fine but the cost of it and just if I'm going to be able to do the same things on my phone and it's getting a lot of information from my phone anyway, I just, I, for me, I, I just don't see the need. I'm really have little to no interest in the watch stuff right now. I'm sure some people do, but <clears throat> you know, I like the haptic feedback, like I said, especially for like giving navigational cues. If I'm doing GPS, that part sounds pretty cool. I like the pedometer. I like the uh, you know exercise the pedometer kind of the, that kind of style stuff. I like that. And if I could find a device, you know, especially one that was halfway accessible, um, all I would really want it to do. I don't want to check Twitter. I don't want to check email. I don't want any sort of that kind of thing. If I had a standalone device, and if anyone knows of any, put one in the comments. That's just simple and it's you know cheap enough. Um, you know, fifty bucks. 100 bucks tops, but even, you know, I'd say even like 50. I just want like a, a watch that is a watch, preferably a digital watch, because I, I just don't care for the analog style. I like digital better, um, with large enough letters or numbers. And I want it to function as a pedometer, um, because I think that would be a really accurate way, like I said, as your body is moving, it just, I think it might track a little bit better than just using a phone. Uh, if you had something on your wrist, you know, you're moving your arms and your, you know, your arms and legs or whatever, just normally as you'd walk, it might track better. So I would potentially be interested in a watch that would do that. Beyond that, I really don't care. Beyond that, I really don't necessarily find a need for these smartwatch kind of things right now. So if anyone knows of anything that's just like a, watch pedometer style device that works that works well and is cheap yeah throw it in the comments below um but yeah other than that um that is apple's september presentation their apple uh, iphone apple watch keynote whatever you want to call it Overall, pretty pleased, and I'm going to be getting a new iPhone very soon. So, hope you guys enjoyed it, found it useful, and uh, watched a little bit of this wedding quake business. So, till next time, I will talk to you guys again 
Later.